Well, good afternoon from sunny San Diego. We bring you the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Arcadian Teen Tournament. Welcome in. We're your two casters, Jordan Ken alongside TK Breezy, bringing you about 13 feet of casters combined here. And TK, before we get to our top eight, which we'll see on display here this mm -hmm. afternoon, Arcadian Tournament. It sounds cool. Mm -hmm. Break it down what it means. So Arcadian Tournament is like this, man. We're going to have these young people playing. We have 13 through 19. That is the age bracket. But no pros, man, because you know some of these pros are actually that young. But none of the pros here today. We are getting some new talent here on the main stage for some Smash Ultimate action. Well, let's talk about how we whittled the field down to eight. We started with 64 participants. They played four-player free-for-all matches to get down to the top eight. So let's look at the bracket and see who we have participating for a championship today. You see the names. You have Milton, Carlos, Ryan with an O, Claire, Aljon, Evan, Ethan and Sam, those are your eight. And as far as rules go here in our opening rounds, it'll be best two out of three, three stocks, six minutes. Correct. When we get to our grand finals, it'll be a best three out of five. I should mention no items, no smash ball, pure unfiltered Super Smash Brothers competition. Yeah, man, it's that tournament gameplay that we are so standard, and it's so standard, we're so used to seeing it, man. This is what I am used to seeing. See, I've been in the tournament scene for about 10 years. This is the penultimate way of playing Super Smash Ultimate. And we talked about this Arcadian format. What's great is, for a lot of these players, it's their introduction to the competitive community. Why is this such a great event for someone that wants to get to that level of, say, some of their top favorite pro players by getting a chance to get a taste of it at this stage. Well, see, uh, here we're gonna just kind of show everyone how it goes down at the tournaments that we do uh, actually host. So you will see, you know, the three out of five, the two out of three is format, the elimination. Now, we usually do double elimination. Here it is single. However, you will see exactly how the bracket works out. And it's also just good to see how the game plays without items, without smash balls, just skill against skill, player versus player. And we've had a wonderful crowd that's been waiting hours to be up front. They've got their rally towels ready to go. They're going to be making noise the entire afternoon. Yeah. They've been supportive. And you talk about this community as a whole, a very encouraging, inviting community as you look to grow the Smash family with Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Yeah, man, it's, it's a great community, man. I've been in it for, uh, as I said, almost almost 11 years now, actually. I'm turning 29. I started when I was 18, and uh, I do not regret a single year in this community. It has been a great time. I've met a lot of friends throughout of it, uh, throughout it, and I hope to meet many more as Smash Ultimate comes out. Well, TK, you've aged very well. Let's get set for our first matchup here between Milton and Carlos. Milton going as Corrin and Carlos as Mario, and you look at Mario, a very balanced character here. Yeah. Mario, he's been a balanced character for a long time. Oh, no, and he air dodges off. That is one thing that is new to Smash Ultimate here. When you do directional air dodge, there is a lot of uh, lag on it. So, therefore, you most likely will end up seeing that bottom blast zone if you air dodge off stage. You see that early SD talking about dropping your plate before you get to the table right there. However, you start to see the pressure from Carlos, but that nice grab into the down throw from Milton on the side. And already, you see the pressure being applied in the neutral game by Milton. Yeah, you can also see the way that Milton is playing now. He is opting to actually not approach, and he has no reason to. You are in the lead. That means you set the pace of the match. So if you want to approach, you can, but if you do not, the other person will eventually have to approach or end up getting timed out because they only have six minutes to get a stock off. A couple of nice aerials by Milton as Milton juggles Carlos at this point. The 3-2 stock lead, almost 3-1, but Mario hangs on. Yeah, just a bit. Oh, okay, and it actually goes through the stage. That is the luxury that you get here on the Congo Jungle, uh, or the uh, Jungle Jake, sorry. That is what you get here as you're able to uh, go through the stage so you can mix up your recovery a little bit and it seemed to work out for Carlos in that situation. Seems like Carlos has settled down a little bit. However, has taken on a lot of damage, still able to hang on. Mario with some heavy weights in that tuxedo, but a couple of juggles from Carlos trying to turn the table here. Yeah, you saw him straight go for that air dodge. This time over the stage, so he was able to land. Oh, put some, uh, put some taunt on him real quick, saying, come fight me. But Milton, actually holding uh, what looks like a be disadvantageous position is actually super advantageous, because what can Carlos do to get him off of that perch rock? And Carlos with so much damage, you figure you have to be careful with how you approach Milton, because one timely hit from Carlos, you're down 3-1 at that point. That's true, the back throw. Oh, not enough. That was, uh, I mean, you fly super far in this game, but as you see, every time you get knocked away in the top right, becomes uh, shows a little mini-map to show you exactly how close you are to the blast zone uh, if you do not actually hit it. Carlos with a nice up tilt. However, both fighters. Oh, and Milton going to take a commanding 3-1 stock advantage at this point. And if you're Carlos, 
How do you approach this situation? Do you yeah, try to be a difficult. little bit more aggressive, or do you try to wait for Milton to make his mistakes? Now, right there, I mean, Milton seems like he is okay. Well, he is stoop kid right now, and he is not leaving that stoop. <laughs> oh, and he gets caught on the roll, though. Beautiful up smash right there from Carlos to get himself back into the game. Now, if he can only do that one more time, he can actually mix it or even it up and maybe start to mount that comeback that he needs to go ahead and take it over Milton. Milton with the down throw doing a fine job as well, too, with those aerials, as we said. You look at the verticality of this level, and it seems like Milton with that larger hitbox with the sword taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And again, no, Milton just right back to the stoop, not really, uh, not really needing to actually leave it. He is in a position to be able to play like this. Carlos trying to apply some pressure with those fireballs. Finally able to get in close on oh. Milton, but that'll do it, Carlos. Falling down the cascading waterfall, and Milton going to go ahead and take the first victory in this one. Our best two out of three. Yeah. And what we saw, that early SD really, really put Carlos behind in this one. And you look at your approach, it completely changes when you're down 3-2. Yeah. And it, it, as you can see, man, I, I assume that would be a totally different match if Milton was behind. Because of the fact that Milton was ahead, he played it exactly like you would expect someone who wants to keep that lead? You know, I'm not going to do anything reckless. I'm not going to do anything risky. I'm going to uh, play it safe, uh, make you approach me with your uh, risky approaches, and then I'm going to punish them. That's really an interesting layout of that stage because it's not just Final Destination where everything's flat and everyone's on even ground in the same neutral game. You had a chance to hang out on that rock and draw Mario towards you, and that's a very difficult position to be in, like you said, to be down and to go jump and attack. All right, round two, Milton versus Carlos. We see Milton with Corn and now Carlos going to Cloud this time. And you've had a chance to play as Cloud a little bit in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. What can you say about his play style and approach? Oh, uh, Cloud, I feel like he's largely, oh no. Oh, okay, that was a nice recovery. I really thought he was gonna be uh, done real quick, but he actually went for the side beat instead of what I thought originally was an air dodge. But as we are saying, Cloud plays are largely the same. He is not nearly as safe as he was in uh, Smash 4 with his options, but he still has a super huge sword. He's still super fast, and uh, he has Limit now. The only thing about Limit now that he's about to catch it, I can remind you guys that you only keep Limit for 15 seconds, so you have to burn it. You have to use it in some way if you want to get the maximum, uh, you know, maximum use of it before those 15 seconds are up. Use it or lose it with there that it limit, is. but there's Cloud connecting with that limit, and that's gonna really help even the score at this point. But Milton, as you said, going back to his stoop, trying to draw Carlos in. Yeah, man, he is not afraid to play as such, but now, this is the thing, though. You cannot allow uh, Cloud to just sit out there and charge limit. So Milton, at some point in time, even if he is in the lead, unless he does not care about Cloud having limit, he will have to approach to stop Cloud from doing exactly what he's doing right now. And a very interesting character decision by Carlos because he knew Milton was going to play a little bit more defensively on that stoop. That gives him the opportunity to charge that limit. But Milton seems perfectly fine with that limit being charged, knowing that I can defend myself in this position. That is correct. So another interesting thing about this game is there is uh, still ledge trumping in, which means two people cannot grab the ledge. And uh, Carlos just, he, he's, he's charity stocking right now, man. That's three stocks he's giving up just, you know, for free. Carlos, unfortunately, stubbing his toe a couple of times in these first couple of rounds, a couple of SDs in these first two matchups. That's really helped Milton out. Milton being very patient. Also taking note, you've got the time, four and a half minutes. And so if you can wait this out, you've got the three to two stock advantage. That is very true, but you can see Carlos swinging his way into it. He's trying to get that last big hit to connect, maybe get the stock off. He only has 8%, so this will be an easy, uh, you know, easy lead for him to take if he's able to get the stock off sooner than later. And going back to the position where Milton's at, as you pointed out, because it's lower, that really removes a lot of options if you have a projectile character. Not too many characters have powerful projectiles that can go down below the level where Milton's hanging out. But Carlos able to connect right there for the KO, and they're both even on their stock at two each. Yeah, and that, that thing about the projectile is very true in this case. You know, Cloud has one projectile being Blade Beam, but it is a horizontal projectile. So because of the way that Milton is under the stage or under the main stage platform, he is not uh, going to be threatened by that at all. Now, if you're Carlos, do you think about taking that stoop for yourself? Oh, but we see Carlos once again falling, and now it's 2-1 advantage Milton. Man, I, I really like what Carlos was trying to do there. He was actually trying to charge up his limit so he can get the better recovery by doing limit up B, or, you know, limit up B, and then snapping the ledge, but he waited, or he was too low. And there it is, actually giving his own stock up Milton. Now we got an even game. Milton, uh, you know, the stoop not really helping him out this time around. No, and now you have to think Milton has to be somewhat aggressive, which he certainly is at this point. A yeah. couple of beautiful aerials against Carlos to take a rather large health advantage at this point, but Carlos connecting with that limit. Okay, 
Milton right back though, but this is an interesting position. Both of them fighting here on the little stool. Oh, and the spike right there from the four there gets back on stage. Gonna charge that limit a little bit, see what he can get with it. Both fighters down to their final stock in a precarious situation. Carlos needs the victory in order to stay alive. Milton trying to get the KO. Move on to the round of four, and there it is. You hear that sound effect. Good. The nice. emotion, the enjoy. Milton with the victory. Corn getting it done twice. And we'll see Milton in the semifinals here, TK. Good, good recovery, or good, I guess, awareness and just good coverage right there from uh, Milton on that, or that top platform. He hit him with the up tilt, couldn't really roll out of it. He was right on top of him. And then right after that, just kind of jumped straight up there, hit him with that far reaching up air and just, just finished him. Just straight up destroyed him at the top. So Milton will move on to the semifinals. Let's get set for our next matchup. It'll be Ryan with an O taking on Claire. Whoever wins this matchup will take on Milton. This is a single elimination tournament here, this Arcadian tournament. And what's interesting is in that last match, I want to go back to Milton doing a great job of really shrinking the stage. Mm -hmm. Whether it was that rock on the lower platform, as, as you said, one of those platforms up top, mm -hmm. really not giving Carlos a lot of area to operate in. Yeah, man, that, that was uh, that was actually a really key play in his offense and defense. You know, he got the lead. He, he, you obviously could see that he knew how to play on the offense, too, because at the end of that last game, he was going on the straight offense. But he realized that if I had the lead and you don't really have a way to get me off of this, uh, this rock, then I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna camp it. This is me, this is my thing now. He claimed that land. Certainly having a nice camping trip on that one as Milton moves on, but let's get to our next round here. Ryan with an O as Ness, and we get to see Cloud at this time with Claire, and we're going back to the same stage here, and you figure maybe they learned something watching the previous match. It'll be interesting to see their strategy in this one, but let's talk about Ness, a character with a unique moveset when compared to the rest of the characters. How do you see Ness faring against Cloud here? Well, Ness uh, does not have the range really to keep up with Cloud. However, though, he does have a great projectile in that PK fire. And now seeing that uh, SDI is not nearly as strong in this game, you're, you're stuck in that for quite a bit. So Ness should be able to get some nice follow-ups uh, anytime he, he gets a PK fire. And then on top of that, the back throw is still a very prominent uh, KO move and the up air and the back air. I mean, Ness has some options. Here we go. Actually looking for the back throw right there. Very close. Would not be able to live another one of those. Now we talk about characters with a projectile that can punish you on that rock. We do see that from Ness. He's got the moves to be able to put some damage on anybody wanting to sit there. And already, a lot of aggressive play from Ness and Ryan as he gets the early KO against Claire. And Ness doing a great job of just being the aggressor early on in this one. Very true. He has to, man. I mean, you do not want to give a Cloud any space. That is exactly how you have to play these small characters with smaller hitboxes. You want to stay on top of your opponent because that is how you're going to get your, uh, your hits. And that is also how you're going to avoid your opponent being able to wall you out. We also see Ryan doing a great job of sharking Claire, going out from underneath Claire, getting some damage as Claire mm -hmm. tries to find the higher ground. And Claire can't drop down fast enough in time because Ness is there to punish with some aerials. Very true. Okay, it actually had the uh, limit blade beam, but it was not able to register as a hit. So Claire, again, forced off to this rock. And how we saw being in an advantageous position last game, not looking so great this time. No, Claire with an SD, and it's already 3-1. And Ness only taking on 58% damage so far this total match. And Ness with some juggles on the side, trying to end this thing early. And Ness, a nice, tidy, business-like 3-0 victory for Ryan. And Ryan with an O, that O is standing for basically not getting knocked out at yeah, all that that's how, many, that's how many lives you right. lost right there. Oh, <laughs> that, that was a clean 3-0 uh, actually from him. But uh, I want to note in that last uh, situation, that is actually a combo that has been, uh, that Ness has used quite a bit in Smash 4. And it seems like it has kind of carried over in the Ultimate. And the reason why he was able to get that uh, KO is because I think he stole Claire's jump. Uh, in with the second forward air, so she was just pushed so far out, there was no way she was able to recover. Yeah, Claire couldn't recover, and Ness was able to get the PK Thunder to get himself back on stage, or at least close to us. We didn't even have to lose a stock, but you saw what you can do with Ness, and I think that's what's great is you see all these different characters, and you see how adept they can be in the hands of somebody that's really practiced with them through all the different generations of Smash, and then finally you get into the situation, you throw in all the different variables of the stage, and it makes for some very interesting matchups. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just nice to see some S uh, representation out here, too. You know, as I was watching uh, the, I guess, the, the first part of the tournament with the Free for all. I didn't really get to see a lot of Ness. And just in general, my time with Smash Ultimate, I haven't seen a lot of people play uh, Ness, but that was just a great display of Ness gameplay coming in from Ryan. Ryan with the victory. He needs one more to move on. 
Claire are going to switch things up and go with Marth this time around. And what do you think about this change to Marth? What's going to be different about Marth as opposed to Cloud that Claire might find some more success against Ness? Well, that is one thing she has. Uh, she has the, now has the counter, which if someone is playing ultra aggressive, you are now able to counter your way out of things every now and then. Marth also being a speedier swordsman can possibly use his movement to kind of mix up uh, Ness a little more than, than Cloud. But at the same time, you know, it, we're still seeing the same uh, thing happen from the first game where this Ness is just right on top of his opponent the entire time. Yeah, Ryan not giving Claire any room to breathe, and Claire already with another SD, and it's 3-2 advantage. Ryan, Ryan trying to close this one out with the victory, and we see that continual pressure through the aerials and the projectiles by Ness, not giving Claire any moment's rest at all. Yeah, Ryan not playing any games right now. Well, uh, he's playing one game, but he's definitely not playing these games with Claire. He's trying to play a single player with game the way he is playing right now. Oh, almost got that almost full charge F smash to connect. Would have been a crazy one. And that is the counter that I'm talking about. Not going to finish it off, but still going to allow herself to get out of that situation uh, that Ryan was putting her in. Claire missing with the charge B. Ryan able to come up from underneath and get the hit. Now sending Claire back to the top of the stage. And we know Ryan loves to operate with his opponent above him. And a second KO, and it's now 3-1. Claire facing a steep hill, trying to get the comeback, but a couple of nice slashes right there. Yeah, that was uh, super close, too. You actually saw the parry come out. You know, that new perfect shield in this game is you have to let go of your shield as an attack is going to hit you. And there, that way you kind of freeze your opponent. Depending on what attack it is, you can get a, a hard punish in. If it's a smash, you can at least get a jab in. If it's their jab in. Again, though, look at the pressure that Ryan is putting on. Yeah, really nice PK fire into the down throw, unable to finish with the follow-up to that combo. But you see all the tools in the tool belt for Ness and how he can apply such different aggressive pressure against you. You really have to be on your toes throughout the entire match. Very true. Ryan, get it back on stage. This time, Claire going to go ahead and pressure him with that dancing blade, pushing it back off. And you can see him actually using the ability to go through the stage to his advantage, kind of shark through, get himself an aerial from under the stage and still grab the ledge. Oh, that could have been a hard punish right there, but a little late on the draw for Claire. Yeah, the opportunities have been there for Claire. She just hasn't been able to take advantage of them. Oh, Claire, though. Beautiful aerial to send Ryan off the stage. It's 2-1. Anything can happen, but Claire close to 100%. You're going to have to be essentially flawless the rest of this match. That is very true. And now Ryan seems to start, uh, seems to be catching on to the fact. Oh, wow, she jumped right into that. That is unfortunate for Claire, but very fortunate for Ryan as he will be moving on. But as I was going to say, man, it looks like Ryan was actually catching on to the fact that he was getting hit by quite a few counters. So after a while, he started charge, overcharging his uh, smashes, so that way he can let the counter play out and then actually get a strong hit for it. And that's such an interesting point. You get a chance through a matchup to learn how your opponent is playing. And you saw right there that Ryan was going to bait Claire into those counters. That counter only has such a small window where mm -hmm. you can really take advantage of it, but you can charge the smashes a lot more in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Yeah, man, now that is one of the... Well, I don't even know like, how that's going to affect the... Uh, I guess the competitive metagame, but it is something that I like seeing just someone like charge an F smash for 17 seconds. Like it's just like, what is this guy doing? Is he really thinking he's gonna hit me? And if that does hit, that's that's gonna be a hype moment regardless of when it hits. You can hit someone at zero, you can hit someone at hundred. I'm still gonna be like, he really let that 15 second charge connect. So And we we, we do wanna remind you that this version of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is still in development. There might be some changes before we get to the release date on December seventh, but some of the major mechanical changes we had a chance to take a look at during the Super Smash Brothers invitational about a month ago mm -hmm. and you were talking about some changes to not only the perfect shield but then roll dodging there's a change there as well too yeah so with roll dodging now uh the more that you roll the more that you actually use any type of evasive maneuvers it actually if you do it in succession they actually get slower and slower so to the point where if you roll um, it's almost like easily punished if you roll like four times in a row. That last roll is going to take so long to be done that people are just going to go ahead and catch it. But here we are into our next match. Our next match, you've got Aljon as Mario. Very fancy, by the way, with the yeah. white top hat. Really dressed his best here. Evan as Ganondorf. And Ganondorf, one of those characters that got a lot of changes, almost an overhaul in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. What do you love about his new game? Well, Ganon honestly just in this game feels a lot faster than his uh, earlier iterations. Ah, I see the edge guard coming in from Al Aljon. Almost. But yeah, as we were saying, man, Ganon also has some sword smashes, so there it looks like there's quite a bit of range on those as well. And, but him just being faster is like the biggest thing that Ganon needs. I always feel like Ganon is, is as good as the game engine, and if the game engine allows him to move around, then he is going to be a great character. Well, another change to that game engine, we heard that Warlock Fist, Warlock Punch, mm -hmm. if you get to a certain point in the charge, it becomes unstoppable. 
essentially. Right. So very powerful there. 3-3 three, three stocks at this point. Ganon at 134, so keep an eye on that. Evan already taking on a lot of damage. That side throw from Aljon, no luck right there as Ganondorf continues to stay on the stage. And here we are back at our stoop. TK. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's been chilling out here. They saw that first game and thought, you know what? <laughs> I like this place too. Oh, okay. That was a, I think that was a down smash. Good stuff to Aljon. Kind of waited for, uh, for Evan to drop his shield and then strike soon as he did it. Very fancy right there by Aljon. You'll love it right now. 3-2 stock advantage for Aljon. All right, now he's trying to get that chase down. The Mario at low percent. Maybe not. Maybe won't get as many. Oh, wow. What a turnaround on that one, the down air. So, oh, and oh. there it is. That big sword at smash. Do you see how fast he flew off that screen? Ganon is a powerhouse. And you talk about that F smash with the sword. It's so much faster in this version, but also it has much more range as well, too. Yeah, man. Like, in the older versions, he would just use his elbow, kind of throw it forward so he would only cover up with so much area. But now that he's getting that big, giant swing, even if you try to jump over him, he's going to connect. Mario trying to defend the stoop. Aljon trying to ledge guard right there, and he is successful. 2-1 stock lead for Aljon. Yeah, that was his that first was best of three. That was, that was a very, uh, that was almost like a textbook uh, edge guard right there. Just a couple back airs, send your opponent too far away to be able to uh, up, be back to the stage, and that is just all you need. I, I think I'm noticing Evan is actually looking for a shield break right now. Uh -oh. And that shield break, that buys some critical time for Evan to charge up one of Ganondorf's very powerful smash attacks or specials. So, trying to apply the pressure. How can you be aggressive with Ganondorf? Even though they sped him up in this game, he's still one of the slower characters. That is true. I mean, but he does have a couple of movement options with hitboxes connected to him. That side B, that, uh, that grab, that's actually a grab, so you're able to grab people out of shield and then down B, of course, one of his fastest moves. Oh, did he just up throw him off the top? He actually he did. Top platform. Up throw off the top. <laughs> and it was so well done. He was able to block the attack and get out that shield quick enough to take a care of a couple of frames to punish with that up throw. And now it's 1-1. One, one. Anything can happen. You look at the power behind Ganondorf. Al John as Mario trying to put this thing away has the huge health advantage at this point. And yeah, Evans uh, he's getting a little reckless right there with those side Bs. You know, he's trying to find himself an approach, but even if that is a grab, he's still able to get hit out if an uh, opponent is wall going through the air with an aerial, as you saw Al John do. Aljon missing with a couple of charged up smashes. That would have ended this game in dramatic fashion. Evan trying to apply pressure, but now switching to more of a defensive mindset, trying to block oh, no. some of those attacks, and that does it. Evan coming from behind, and that seemed like a big mistake by Aljon. A little bit of a miscue right there. Yeah, I'm actually wondering what he was trying to do there because if he was, if he was still on stage, all he would have done with that um, input was roll to the ledge with his face, with his, uh, you know, his back to the ledge. So maybe that would have been great to set up for an up smash to hit earlier because Mario's up smash hits behind him first. But yeah, just a little bit of a miscalculation right there. Ends up flying off stage and giving that game up. Well, you talk about this stage, Jungle Japes. There's not a whole lot of ground to really maneuver. All the platforms are relatively narrow and you can't be too fancy out there. You still want to play a little bit conservative and especially in that situation, Aljon, who seemed to be in control the entire match, one slip up, that does it. Evan takes the first game. Yeah, and something about the Marios in this jungle, Jakes, man. They just, they just really be giving these stocks up. <laughs> Both the Marios so far have been the only SDs that uh, I've remembered to see so far uh, in uh, this first round of RT and Arcadia. No changes in characters. Al John going as Mario, Evan as Ganondorf. Let's go ahead and run this thing back. And I think what we saw from the first match was Al John having a little bit more success with being aggressive against Evan. Evan finding his success when he's able to be defensive and find those areas to punish. That's very true. And honestly, I, I still want to see if, if Evan is able to get these screen breaks. That is something that uh, Ganon is very adept at doing. Most of his moves. Uh, most of his smashes do a lot of damage on the shield, and then on, if you end up getting a down B, an aerial down B on the shield, it most likely will break it after you hit it with a smash. And right now, Evan getting some success, being aggressive, but Aljon using the up B through the bottom of the stage to catch Evan during a charge animation. And then here comes Aljon trying to, once again, ledge guard from the stoop, and he does it for the second game in a row. Okay, he's really good at it, man. He's lining up these back airs. They are so crisp, they are so pristine, and they keep finding their mark. On this Ganon, or on this recovering Ganon. Mario with the fireball in midair, following up with three jabs into a nice little combo. Ganondorf trying to charge that town smash. Oh, but there's that side smash that we talked about with the sword. He unseats it for a KO, and it's 2 2. Yeah, every time, man. And, and I know that being able to recover through the stage is a luxury that you do not get on a lot of stages. Sometimes you got to just go for the ledge, man. That was a situation where I feel like if he went for the ledge, he would have been in a better position to get back on stage and keep that stock going. Uh oh. Okay, that time through the stage, though, I like it. 
That upbeat, very effective for Aljon getting back on the stage. That's twice now he's been able to connect on Evan with that upbeat and take advantage at that point. Here comes another charge down smash. No luck right there. Knocking a few purple coins out of Evan as well, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah right there, that's, uh, that's Ganondorf's up tilt. I mean, he gets a, a little bit... It's actually just a long move, but it's a super powerful move. It used to charge for a lot longer in, in older iterations, so they sped that up as we've talked about Ganondorf being sped up. So it might be a viable move as far as an edge guard. That was a clean edge guard there from Evan, though. Down B for the KO, 2-1, and Evan, after being on the brink of a loss in game one, full control at this point, has the one stock advantage over Aljon. Able to connect right there with the B. Oh, the but there's right that here. perfect shield that we saw. Yeah, that was quick. That if you would end up, the thing about his side B, Ganon, it, it is a grab, and if you do go over the ledge, it still counts in, uh, as a KO for you. So he's able to possibly just go ahead for the uh, SD and then take uh, Mario for a ride with him. Whoa. Oh, down B was almost enough to send Aljon off the screen and out of the tournament, but Aljon able to hang on. And we're seeing some great work with this 2-1 stock advantage. Evan making the most of his second stock at this point. Very true. And honestly, with the way that Aljon kind of threw this away, this could be the turnaround. They could have gotten, gotten to his own head, and that forward air is going to rock his world and finish him off. He is gone. Listen, sometimes it's not fair in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. He's able to get the KO right there. Aljon, who we thought was going to take game one, falls, gives the game to Evan, and then Evan, realizing he has this precious opportunity, very, very nicely done with Ganondorf. He'll move on to the semifinals. And there we got a chance to see a character, as we mentioned earlier, Ganondorf with an overhaul, using some of those new, new tools to his advantage mm -hmm. against a very well-balanced Mario character. And yeah, I mean, just that right there, that match just goes to show you how easy it is to, like, lose momentum. You know, he was... We, the way that Aljon was playing that first game, if you would have just turned it off, you would have thought, okay, he's definitely going to win that, you know? And next thing you know, uh, he ends up dropping that stock and just cannot get that momentum back throughout the entirety of the second game, thus being out of this uh, tournament. However, we are going to see who's left in the tournament. Let's go ahead and see that bracket real quick as we get into our last match that Ethan C. and Sam S. about to come up. Yes, Milton, Ryan, and Evan move along. So I guess if your name ends in an N, you're most likely moving on. So let's see if <laughs> Ethan can keep the streak alive or if Sam can break things up here. Sam versus Ethan as we get set for our fourth and final match in this opening round of the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Arcadian Team Tournament here in San Diego. And we've got Ooh. Ethan as a Little Mac and Sam going as Ike. So it's Fists versus Blades as we get set for another matchup in Jungle Japes. And you figure Little Mac, not the greatest character in the air. So if I'm Ike and Sam, do I try to look for the higher ground the majority of this match? Well, I, I feel like if, uh, if you are Ike, yeah, and Sam, you're either gonna stay here on the on the perch because you know he's gonna have to jump over there at some point in time, or yeah, you're gonna, gonna try to stay on those platforms. Now, Ike definitely adept at fighting, but Little Mac on the ground is always gonna be a scary monster. We see Sam with that side B getting Ike back on the stage. Both fighters, relatively same health percentage at this point as they're both fully and healthy with three stocks and. Neither one really taking the advantage aggression-wise. It seems like they're both exchanging blows, but look for that super punch ready to go for Little Mac. Uh, you, uh, you can see him trying to line it up, too. He didn't do a single move after that uh, KO punch got lined up. He was just waiting for Sam to either give him an ill-advised roll, and he was going to try to catch it either way, though. Does not get it to connect, and now Sam lives to see another day on this stock. Sam connecting with a couple of up -bees. Little Mac trying to connect with some dash punches on the ground, and that's enough to send Ike off the right-hand side of your screen. 3-2 lead for Ethan early on in this one and the good thing about um, the good thing about Ethan and his character is I, I'm pretty sure that Little Mac still has uh, super armor on his smashes so he's able to kind of just run through things if he feels like an attack is coming out and he's able to beat it out and also get a KO however not position to do anything right there that up smash Ike is going to take that stock and even it back up and that up smash takes up so much of a hitbox whether it's in front of Ike or on top of Ike there's so much ground that it covers so very devastating move right there executed Precisely by Sam, that side B getting him back on the stage. Little Mac trying to connect with a couple of punches, but both fighters relatively evenly matched in this matchup. Yeah, man, just a slew of a uh, fist out here from Little Mac. None of them seeming to connect over Ike and Little Mac. Both characters that are able to dish out a lot of damage with a single hit. So that is something that both of our competitors are going to have to watch out for. Man, every hit seems to matter here. Wow. Okay, there it is, that fire up, uh, up smash. So that means he got a, a very nice sweet spot on that. The uppercut coming in from Little Mac. Both fighters, two stocks, health advantage for Ethan in this one. Trying to get on to the semifinals, and another 
properly executed smash attack from Ethan. He takes the 2-1 stock advantage. Yeah, that was good stuff from Ethan this time around. You kind of see him throwing that out quite a bit. That zone haymaker, that side special right there, that is a, 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 a nice move for recovery as well in this game, but also it's just a clean move for KOs because it's super strong. However, another thing that you notice about Little Mac, he does not have the greatest of recoveries, and that has been uh, you know, true since his inception in Super Smash Bros. 4. No, he does not. So you see him losing that stock, and now it's 1-1, but Ike! Unfortunately, that side B not executed at the right time, so he careens down the waterfall. Little Mac getting the early victory in this one. So now it's 1-0 as we take a look at what we have going on here in our second game. Ethan needs one more victory here to move on to the semifinals, but it seems like we probably won't see a character switch because both fighters, neither one of them really had a strong advantage in that matchup like we saw in these other matchups between the players here. Yeah, that was pretty, uh, that was pretty down the middle. You know, that was unfortunate that he was a little low on his recovery to kind of keep that match going. I think if he would have uh, let that side B go earlier, he might have drifted to the ledge and grabbed it, but he let it go a little late, was under the ledge, wasn't able to grab it. So let's see if he is able to adjust, you know, his recovery angles here and in this next game, and maybe his plan of attack. Uh, you know, it was even, but that doesn't mean that someone can't pull away in this next game. Uh, as we kind of saw in that last set before us, where someone uh, was in the lead and then the other person ends up you know, just straight up surpassing them and then taking over the rest of their set. So here we are to our second game, though. All right, actually get a switch of, uh, well, I guess a switch of the outfit. You know, foot change. Yeah, hoodie yeah. Back. We got hoodie, hoodie back going on right now. Ethan is Little Mac. He's got the 1-0 uh -oh, match lead right now. If he can get this game, he'll go ahead and move on to semifinals. But there goes Sam with that side B once again. You see that lot? Oh, oh, oh T -K. Can we talk that about how filthy. Sam? Can we talk about how filthy that was? Uh, Sam actually taking no hits in that first stock, and, and you can just see that uh, you know the hitbox difference really paying off for him that time around. He really walled him off the sides with just four airs because he could not jump over it. And then that strong up smash. I mean, Ike is just such a powerhouse. A couple of jabs coming in from Ethan as Little Mac as he faces a 3-2 stock deficit against Sam. Sam trying to even this up at 1-1, but a flurry of punches sends Sam off the left-hand side of the screen. Sam deciding to take the higher ground, dropping down, trying to throw out a neutral air. No luck right there, but connects with another aerial. And Ethan doing a great job of blocking and trying to counter, but once again, both fighters so evenly matched in the neutral game. That is very true. Now you're starting to see Ethan uh, opt to go for Little Mac's version of the counter here. Uh, the thing is, the Little Mac's counter, the way that it moves, he actually steps back before he moves forward. So if you're trying to catch him uh, in the air, more often than not, you'll be able to hit the ground and just avoid that attack altogether. Still, though, avoid some damage. We'll Sam get that. Oh. Sam getting back on stage with that side B and connecting with a lot of fares and up airs here with Ike using that huge hitbox of the sword to his advantage. All right, there it is. That F tilt is going to go ahead and take Sam's first stock, but Sam immediately realizes, well, oh, he's, he's going to be pressured. He's probably going to roll. The up smash is going to cover it. That up smash, just like a dog, has been man's best friend for Sam in this one right now. That is very true. 2 1 stock advantage for Sam, trying to force a game three in this match between these two. Oh, you see the counter coming in. Yeah, that's, that's going to be big for both of them, to be honest, because as I said, you know, both of these characters are such strong characters that if you do get a counter, whatever you're countering will most likely be a strong attack right back on them. Sam using a lot of short hop aerials to wall off Ethan as Little Mac, but Little Mac trying to find his spots to get in there. Oh, Little Mac coming face to face with the side B. Comes out the victor in that one, and Little Mac with that super punch ready to go. Oh. Will we see, but misses for the second time already. Oh, and how about the block and the punish by Sam? Yeah, see, I think that's going to be a, a little bit of a thing that the Little Mac will have to get used to. That is unfortunate for Sam. Yet another stock kind of getting dropped from being too low. But yeah, that's something that the Little Mac is going to have to get used to. The change from uh, Smash 4 to this, I feel like the hitbox has been shifted a little bit. So you're going to have to figure out exactly how far you need to be from the opponent. But look at the comeback here. Uh-oh. Ethan is trying to grind in this one. He was down 90-0 to zero as far as health here finally, but he's come storming back, and now it's evenly matched. One stock left. Ethan trying to close this one out. Sam trying to hang on and force a game three. Both fighters exchanging. Oh! oh! But the up smash once again from Sam. Give me one, not two, but three of them to take this game, and now we get set for a game three here, TK. That was a close one, man. That... Woo! Just down to the Woo! wire, and like the way that he was Woo! coming back, <laughs> the way he was coming back, I, I was for sure that he had all the momentum on his side. Unfortunately, just 
hung out on that platform a little too long, and uh, he, that I just felt the he felt the need. He felt the need for the third up smash. Ethan and Sam going to a game three, trying to find their spot in the semifinals here. You figure we'll see the two same fighters because it's been so evenly matched throughout both of these games here. Yeah. Ethan going as Little Mac. Are we going to see a change from Sam? Most likely not. Looks like we'll go with Ike. You got the victory there. Why mess with something if it ain't broken at this point? And it seems like if you are Ethan, you're on the lookout. Up smash, up smash, up smash, up smash. You yeah. want to be careful. You want to look out for that against Ike. Yeah, and I think right now Sam's biggest thing is, uh, you know, watching out for Ethan uh, dropping that. You know, he's been dropping a lot of super arm on him. The reason why he was able to beat some of those side Bs is because, again, Little Mac, when he is throwing out his smashes, they have super armor, so he's out, able to power through an attack and still hit you. And you kind of saw him trying to implore that every time Sam was going for recovery. And Sam really utilizing those short hops, whether it's into some aerial attacks or even a counter, short hop into counter to really try and catch Ethan in the middle of some of those smash attacks, in the middle of some of those fast, powerful attacks as well, too. And that seemed to be working very well for Sam over these first two games. That's very true. Oh, okay, yeah, you got to get behind that. He, you actually use the F smash angle down, which does a lot of shield damage or a lot of damage in general if it hits you. However, Ethan unable to recover, and now it's 3-2 stock advantage for Sam in this third and decisive game, but Ethan able to connect right there. Sam hanging on. Ethan trying to patrol the bottom. Sam being very careful about when he jumps down. Another short hop into an aerial, waits until the counter window cools down. And able to punish right there. A grab off the recovery, and here we see the edge guarding. You get a, a double Mac counter right there. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone shook on the left side, so. But yeah, this is uh, this is still some great gameplay coming in from Sam. He's honestly just trying to keep Little Mac in his most disadvantageous position. That is basically off stage and in the air, so. Little Mac getting the KO and had a super punch ready to go, but that cooled off. Ike, once again, punishing on some of that window of opportunity after those smash attacks get done, and here it is, 2-1. Sam's got Ethan down to his final stock. Sam trying to find his spot in the semifinals and the counter off the short hop. Big counter right there. I mean, he saw the charge coming, so honestly, if Ethan is, uh, is paying attention, he should start charging those uh, smashes just a little longer. I mean, you have a lot of time to charge it in this game, and if he feels like he's going to get countered, he will be able to get a full charge match just by charging a little more uh, to let the counter go away. A bevy of fares being thrown out by Sam as he tries to keep oh! it. But no, there comes the super punch. And we're down to our final stock here between Sam and Ethan trying to find a spot in the semifinals. Yeah, man, you are not allowed to do anything to that super punch defensive though, outside of getting out the way. You could not block that. You saw him just go right through that shield and go ahead and take that stock. So here we are, the, uh, the uh, recovery. So go ahead and get the hit and also back onto the stage. Ethan, though, at 123%. So you know if you get connected by that up tilt that we see, you are a goner and done for the tournament. Sam looking for his window of opportunity, but you know how quickly Ethan can come back and rack up that damage. That's very true. Down to the wire, though. As, as we said, you can actually see Ethan smoking. He's in that. He's got a little rage on him right now, so his moves will be hitting a little farther than uh, usual. And honestly, I think he's uh, got him in a smash, smash range. Oh, watch out. That neutral air almost finishing it all. Neutral air, not enough right here. Ethan moving left and right on the ground. Sam trying to find that short hop opportunity that he's found so much success with in this matchup. Who's going to be the first one to break and who will connect? Oh, but there it is by Sam. And you knew that the dice was rolled by both of them at that point. Man, that However, was, oh, that was a, that was a, a clean, that was a, I'm closing my eyes, dice roll right there. Like, <laughs> I don't even want to see the results. He walked in with the dash tech as he was charging. If that uh, smash would have been let off in time, he would have just powered through that dash attack and finished him off. So that was do or die from both our competitors right there. What a match. Sam battles from the brink to find a spot in the semifinals, and now we get a chance to see our four fighters that are looking for a spot in those grand finals. You take a look Milton. at the updated bracket. You have Milton taking on Ryan with an O in our first semifinal matchup, and then Evan versus Sam. And so you're going to see different player combinations here, but I really like the approach from Sam the short hop to set up everything with Ike because he knew if I'm staying on the ground in this neutral game against Little Mac, I don't stand a chance. I need to do something to get into the air to set myself up, use some of those attacks to have a much larger hitbox. Yeah, I mean, he also uh, implored a lot of grabs in that last game because he saw that every time that Little Mac had hit back to the stage or Ethan hit back to the stage that he was going to block. So instead of just attacking his shield, he was like, well, okay, I'll just throw you off stage. I'll put you back in a disadvantageous position, and then we're just going to restart that whole circle over and over where you think you're safe, and I grab you and put you back off stage.
Well, that up smash getting Sam his first victory in game two. We didn't see that really come out in game three. You figured if Ethan had a chance to learn something from game two, it was to avoid that. He did, however, Ethan unable to avoid elimination. But let's get you set for our first semifinal action. The crowd is juiced here in San Diego as we get a chance to continue along with this Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Arcadian Teen Tournament. Milton taking on Ryan with an O. Milton going as Corrin and Ryan with an O using that Ness. We saw such great gameplay from Ness using a lot of aerials. Let's see how Milton can counter that. Yeah, man. It's unfortunate for Ethan, though, because like, had he made it, you know, we would have had the all-in yeah. <laughs> all <-in laughs> of the end of the name final right here, but he just kind of let him down and just like getting let down. Looks like that recovery. No! Ryan giving up the homie stocks. We doing this? <laughs> the homie stocks? Oh, no, man. <laughs> Well, I never, I never like seeing the homies like get, get, uh, giving up because I've seen a lot of people actually lose games off of that. So here we are, though. Let's see if Ryan's able to keep that composure. I mean, he did give it up, but he was playing quite well in that first round, so I don't want to count him out by any means. Milton and Ryan down there to two stocks here. Milton, however, can't get through the defenses of Ryan, and Ryan, we know, has that super aggressive play style with Ness. Yeah. That is very true, but this is the thing, though. I feel like this is not a stage where you're allowed. You know, Milton, he had that game plan where he was standing on a place where it was super uh, advantageous for him, but disadvantageous for someone to try to approach. And I do not see that on the stage that we're on right now, Friggin' Orphan. Uh, not really a stage where you're allowed to sit anywhere super safe. Now Milton is the one applying the pressure, chasing Ryan all over the map and finding a lot of success as Ryan's looking to try and regain his ground to become the aggressor in this one. Able to counter right there. Here comes that PK Thunder. Is it enough? Milton unable to recover, and Ryan going to take a 2-1 stock lead. And I'm surprised Milton actually went for that side B. Uh, he did end up tagging the stage, which would have allowed him to up B a little later uh, and possibly just land on that top platform. But instead, he went for that side B, maybe trying to skip the stage and just kick his way back on. Didn't work out in his favor, though. Ryan using that PK fire to set up a lot of combinations. Can Ryan recover with the PK thunder? Is it enough? No. 1-1. One, one. Final stock in this first game in the semifinals between Ryan and Milton. Both fighters trying to find the advantage. We've seen aggressive play styles from both of them, but who will be the first one to gain the upper hand? Yeah, and you can see Milton still trying to find a spot just on the stage where he's allowed to stand and kind of force you to uh, come in him. But you saw Ryan actually just throwing those PK fires over the ledge. PK fire actually uh, not even completely vertical. It does kind of slow down a little bit on the ground. So he was possibly able to hit, hit the top of the shield just from where he was standing. Ryan really utilizing those fares and nares to move in and apply that pressure against Milton. Not enough right there to send Milton off the stage. Milton trying to recover, and that'll do it. Ryan taking the first game, and both players very aggressive. And in the middle of the match, you saw Milton start to take more of that momentum, but Ryan as Ness, as we've talked about, those aerials he's so adept with and then setting things up with that PK fire. Yeah, man. So he actually gave up the homie stock, but did not allow, did not stop him from taking the uh, actual first game here. So let's see if he is able to take another one, get himself into the grand finals. Hopefully no one uh, drops any stocks, you know, without, <laughs> without reason. You know, hopefully we get a full three stock game here this time around. Well, it talks about the community right there. We've spoken about it before. It's a very fair, inviting, welcoming community. And rather than trying to punish Milton for falling off the stage, Ryan being a gentleman and saying, hey, listen, I understand that that wasn't something you were trying to do. Let's make it 2-2 and give ourselves a clean match here. Hey, look, man, it's a tournament, okay? You want to <laughs> drop your stocks, you can do that on your no, own time, no okay? Like, yeah. No no love for me, man. You want to drop your oh, stocks, you can do it on I'm your try, own time, I'm trying okay? to be the nice guy right there, so I'll keep that in mind whenever we go against each other sometime here, TK. Let me write that down. Don't fall off the stage. TK will be a buster. Let's get set for a second game here. Corrin and Ness, no changes in characters right now. Milton trying to Apply much more pressure. We saw that using those aerials, dashing in, being able to link together some of those jab combos. Yeah, man. and it seems like Ryan, though, he's always able to get that forward air off of that down throw uh, follow up. Now, I think if Milton holds out, he is possibly able to get far enough away. So you do have to directionally influence yourself away from your opponent and uh, kind of get as far away from him as possible. And that's what you're seeing from Ryan. Whenever he's moving on the map, he always has either a fair or an air if he's in midair, or he's got some type of attack out in front of him. So you have to be really careful, really defensive as he approaches you because he you knows he's going to be throwing out an attack. Yeah. Look at this, though. Ryan, always coming down the, you know, onto the ground with an attack this time around, but it looks like he was able or still going to eat a punish right there with those jabs. Sneaks that back air in there. Ooh, okay, that was close. I'm not even sure if he was still able to counter that. I think if Ryan would have held that just a little bit, he would have connected with that almost full charge PK flash. However, side B, the, uh, that pinch, 
a lot a very strong right at the end and it's actually a tipper so if you get that tipper hit you send people flying a lot farther oh milton's got ryan pinned oh, against no. the wall and jab after jab can ryan shield hold on oh a couple of perfect shields oh. milton looking for the shield break but no a couple of perfect shields back and forth and how about the defensive capabilities of ryan to get out of that trap ryan he was actually trying to make an evo moment, <laughs> moment right there shout <laughs> yeah, out John to Justin Wall again right oh yeah we all remember that one. Oh, that was close but either way good stuff uh, he ends up getting out there with minimal damage taken and on top of that, and he's taking that stock, so get himself right back to the game. Look how much damage he just delivered with two attacks. PK fire into the down throw. We've seen that time and time again with Ryan and Ness, utilizing that to a huge advantage. 2-2 two -two stock at this point. You've got Ryan with the one-game lead, trying to find his spot in the finals. And we see Milton, that aggression here with Korn, paying off as he's chasing Ryan down across the map. That's very true. Again, though, Ryan. No, uh, no slouch with these back airs. He's been hitting a lot of those. He's been able to keep the pressure up. Also been able to cross up Milton on his way down so that he can land behind him, not get shield grabbed for hitting his uh, shield. Thus forcing Milton to have to do a different option after shield. Ryan finding the right positioning for Milton, not trying to chase him down, but looking for those opportunities in the air. Oh, that PK Thunder will be enough. Milton able to get through that and avoid it. Nicely done. Ryan. Getting back on stage with that PK Thunder. There's the chance to punish, and you saw it. Milton saw the pitch coming down the plate and knocked it out of the park. Oh, yeah, clean up smash right there from Milton. Not going to waste any time. You know, you're actually kind of stuck in the air for a little bit in that uh, final position of PK Thunder, too. So he, kinda, he was sitting there like a bullseye, basically. PK Thunder trying to rain down on Milton. Milton being very patient at this point. 2 1 stock advantage. Milton trying to get a game to send us to a third game in this semifinal matchup. Ryan. Trying to make the comeback. A KO here would go a long way towards evening things up. Very true. So look, you can kind of see him kind of lining it up, man. And Milton knows what exactly uh, Ryan is looking for, which is most likely that back throw. You know, his back's to the, to the wall. You end up getting grabbed, and there it is. Not enough, though. Not close enough. I mean, that was that was exactly what he was looking for there, but just did not have enough, have enough damage to actually get that to convert to a KO. Milton gets back on the stage, and we see this in every match, that critical 2-1 stock advantage lead. How much damage can you do before it's even stock? And Milton able to get 43 on Ness, so you figure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing at this time. Yeah, you kind of see Ryan really showing his hand. I mean, he's kind of running up and shielding, and that's going to be something that uh, Milton's going to have to watch out for. Not really able to throw out those Dragon Fang shots because of the fact that Ness can't absorb them and get some of that health back. And Milton replicating what he was doing in Jungle Japes, finding the lower ground and trying to bait in Ryan. That PK Thunder connecting. Milton still staying alive, close to 160. Ryan being very patient, much more defensive now. We saw an aggressive Ness, but now being very patient, and now it's one stock each. And you figure here's where you're going to see Ryan become a little bit more aggressive. Yes, very true. I mean, he had to just find a way to get that stock off. Finally did it. I feel like he was definitely showing his hand with the way he was running in and just shielding, kind of waiting for uh, Milton to grab, hit a shield so he can grab him. But, oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> Tried to do it twice, but no luck there. A couple of PK fires has Ryan in the driver's seat now in the final stock for both fighters. If Ryan can get a KO, he moves on to the finals. Not enough there. Is the PK Thunder going to set him up? Unable to connect with an aerial. Milt applying a little bit more pressure, but is playing with fire. The throw still not enough. PK Thunder missing right there. Ryan completely has turned this thing around, TK. Yeah, that's going to be it. Just barely. I mean, you can see it again in the top right that you saw the uh, the mini map show up to kind of show you if he's going to actually hit the blast zone or not. But it was just barely passing that blast zone for him to get that KO on that back throw. Ryan with an O, and I love the shift in play style. We had a chance when we talked to the professional players at the Super Smash Brothers Invitational. Mm -hmm. They talked about how you have to change your play style. You just can't stick to one style the entire match. And we saw Ness really change to a much more defensive mindset when he was down 2-1. And then once it became one stock each, you saw him really, really become aggressive, and that's what turned the tide of this match. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, he was, he was looking for a way to just get that stock off with minimal damage on his last stock so that way he was able to set up for the comeback. And because of that, that is why he went so defensive. He wanted to take it slow. He didn't want to just throw moves out and then end up getting punished for throwing out those uh, risky but super powerful moves such as the smashes. And then after he got that stock, you saw him turn on the Jets. I mean, a huge combo right there. The two uh, PK fires into the PK flash. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that move hit since like 2005, man. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> you, man. It's been a long time. So good stuff to uh, Ryan.
or yeah, Ryan from moving on right there. Good Ryan stuff, with man. an O moving back 2005. You were probably rocking a tall tee back then. Yeah, and a throwback jersey. Let's take <laughs> a look Force at the one. updated bracket here as we have our first player in the finals. Ryan with an O. We keep calling him that. We love him. As we get set for Evan versus Sam in our second and final semifinal matchup. And we saw Sam really battle back with Ike as he was taken on. Little Mac controlled by Ethan. Mm -hmm. Evan, a 2-0 victory against Aljon. So that Ganondorf versus Ike, a couple of big time sword wielding characters here. Evan. And we know that both of them can do just a great job of being aggressive as well too. So I'm really interested to see how this one plays out. Oh yeah. I mean, this is this is definitely the battle of the strong boys right here. I mean. Gan is so strong, he feels like he only needs to use a sword for three attacks. Like, it's just, like how do you how do you how do you justify being that strong? So <laughs> we'll find out right here, right now. As we are right back on the frigate Orpheon. We're gonna see how this one plays out. Evan just kind of trying to find some space, but Sam throwing out all of this match. He actually gets his jump taken right there. Luckily for him, Ike with a pretty good horizontal recovery within that side B. Ooh. Oh, Ganon! How about the aerials we're seeing from Ganon over the last couple of matches? from Evan. He's done a great job of moving around with Ganon, making himself very difficult to defend against. Oh, TK. He, he walked through and he just kicked him right back out that front door. <laughs> Man, that was a <laughs> Get quick back to where turnaround. he came from here. <laughs> Evan, 3-2 stock advantage against Sam. Sam trying to connect. There's that up smash that's been so effective for Sam. He cleared things out in that second game against Ethan, courtesy of that. And we saw the short hop aerials really being deployed by Sam, but not so much this time against Ganon, because Ganon really just powering through a lot of the moves we've seen by Sam, but oh, not enough recovery there, as we're now down to two socks each. Yeah, man. I was, I was actually wondering what Sam was doing on the left side when the platform was a little under, but he was actually using that as a way to, uh, basically, he's kind, of, he's kind of almost sharking. And he was just under the stage, but if Ganon actually walked over there, he would have been uh, hit out by one of those up airs, and then he immediately comes back to the back air again, though. Putting the pressure on, Hit him with yet another Sparta kick, but this time he's, in the, he's able to recover. Forward air followed by the neutral air as Sam tries to approach with those short hops that he was so well known for. We knew we would see them come back out. We knew we would. Oh, yeah. Sam trying to use the large hitbox of that sword to space himself from Evan. Evan being a little bit patient below, but once again, another aerial from Ganon. Oh, perfectly timed on the side beat from Sam. Yeah, that was perfect time to avoid uh, getting hit by that up tilt a little earlier, and I think that would have been a trade, and it would not have been favorable for Sam by any means. However, he's able to, he's trying to even it up real quick, the up throw into the up air, not enough. 2-1 stock advantage for Evan. Trying to win this first game in the semifinal. Sam trying to find a comeback. Figure Sam will play a little bit more defensive at this point. Look for his opportunities because you know they're going to be there. You're going to avoid those powerful attacks from Cannon. Yeah. Evan uh, actually getting away with a, a little bit right here. You're not actually able to grab the ledge twice and keep uh, invincibility. And it doesn't matter if it's two different ledges. You have to touch the ground first before you're able, you're able to get invincibility back. And he's been double tapping that, those ledges on the right side. Either way, though. Uh, Sam able to get himself a stock and even it up actually straight up. Both these guys fresh on their last stocks. First hit getting awarded to Evan. Oh, grab into the kick. Evan trying to string together a couple of powerful moves here to rack up the damage against Sam. Shielding at this point. Sam picking and choosing his spots, but that kick has been so effective for Evan and Ganondorf. Sam trying to take the higher ground. Short hops into aerials. It's been the secret for success for Sam. Gets three in a row right there, TK. Oh, man. And this is looking a little rough right now for Evan. Now he's now off stage, but oh. yeah, there's no left there when the stage is connected. And unfortunate for him, that stage just got back to full on or, you know, full stage platform mode. Woo. And we discussed how these stages sometimes really keep these characters on their toes because this isn't just your flat final destination that we're so used to playing. Yeah. You have all this variety and variables that come out from these stages here, and it's thrown these competitors off at sometimes. We saw that early on Jungle James, but as we said right there, that stage and that transition, you're expecting to get up through the stage, but no luck right there as Sam takes the first game in that semifinal matchup. Look we'll see if we here. see the same trainers. Look the fans trying to egg them on to choose a different player, but I feel like if you're <laughs> Sam, you're not going to mess with what got you here at this point. Oh, not not at all. I mean, these guys have uh, been very successful on their character picks up until this moment. So let's see exactly how this one pays out. I mean, that was still relatively a close game. I think he just wasn't ready for that stage to close out on him uh, the way it did, and therefore, because of that, he wasn't able to grab the ledge. So we'll see how we get into uh, this next game. We're still on the same stage, but now he has knowledge. Now he knows if the stage is full on together, then I cannot grab that middle ledge. 
No changes here. Evan going as Ganondorf, trying to get a victory here to force a game three. Meanwhile, Sam, listen, I got to get one more victory. Now I'm in the finals taking on Ryan. So Sam did a great job coming back from a 2-1 stop deficit in the previous game. And we saw another one of those shifts from defensive to offensive styles. And that voted very well for Sam. But at three stocks each, you can be as aggressive as you want to at this point. There it is, man. The short hop aerial that you were uh, pointing out this time under the ledge here in the middle of the stage. He was uh, kind of just threatening him if he ever decided to move over there. But Evan, going to hold fast. Go ahead and keep his, uh, his persistence of staying on the left side of the stage until it reconnected. Down B connecting for Evan as he careens down towards the stage, able to catch Sam. But Sam, how about that powerful attack right there? Then charging the B, trying to catch Evan sleeping. Oh, not going to be enough right there. Oh, Evan with the block and the punish. That's it. Sam off the stage. Sam able to recover. And both fighters already racking up a ton of damage early into their first stock. Ooh. Okay, Evan getting tricky with the recovery. Going to use that uh, down B to rapidly accelerate. And then jump back up and grab that ledge. All right. Ooh. Oh, the aerials coming in from Ike and Sam. Able to get the first stock off of Evan. It's 3-2, Sam with the advantage. But you know, if you're sitting anywhere close to 100, you're KO bait for Evan at this point with Ganondorf. And yeah, man, just as you said, it made the back point. Air. That's why I'm here. <laughs> so quick with it. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I actually getting a new up air in this game. And it is like, it's basically like an aerial uppercut, but with a sword. So a lot of reach there, a lot of power on it. And uh, you can see him kind of trying to explore that as much as he can. One thing I love about Ike is how powerful his jab is. That one, two, three quick jab combo. You're able to punish so quickly with it, but it clears your opponent out so quickly and does so much damage. Oh, yeah. Too. Yeah, man, definitely something that uh, you'll see a lot of Ike's throw out uh, back today with a lot of jab grabs because people will be trying to block, block the last few hits. However, uh, if you get hit by all of them, that is a lot of damage, and you can probably sit in a disadvantaged position. So. Down to the wire between our two competitors, though, on the second stock. Still looking for that up tilt to connect. And keep an eye on Evan and those dash attacks being thrown up by Ganondorf. Those are doing a great job of setting up either fares or nares coming from him to follow up for a very beautiful two-hit combo. He's found some success against Sam, so look out for that. But Sam clearing things out, and Sam is just one KO away from getting into the finals. No waste of time for Sam and oh, okay, there it is. No waste of time for Evan trying to get right back into it. Tried to hit him with another four tilt, but was not enough. And now Sam rolling out of harm's way and then getting a huge punish right there with that down tilt double four there. Looking a little rough right now for Evan. He's gonna have to find a way to get the stock off. Is that it? He's pretty far off, but no, still managing to make it back. Sam though, really knowing his character and his recovery. I put those two forms of recovery, vertical and horizontal, so yeah. that makes him a very difficult character to keep off the stage. And now it's Evan staring down a 2-1 deficit, but now it's 1-1. Can Evan do to Sam what Sam did to Evan in the previous game and force oh. a game three? But no, Evan, oh, Evan with a mishap, and that'll do it. That. Evan falling off the stage. That is Evan, unfortunate. excuse me, staying alive. Sam falling off the stage, and now it's 1-1 as we get set for our third and final game to figure out who's going to take on Ryan. And listen, something like that, you don't get a gentleman's stock when you knock yourself out. Or what was it, homie stock? Uh, the homie like stock, yeah. yeah that's I'm the a little homie bit older, stock. I you said gentleman. Really <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a homie maybe six years ago for me now. It's a handshake and a gentleman. You can do dap and homie and all that stuff. I'll try to stay cool with the TK. All right. <laughs> I got you, man. But yeah, that is unfortunate for him. I mean, he pretty much just drop zone himself with that up air. I don't even think the up air connected it. Just, I don't, maybe he didn't think he was going to hit that exact angle because he threatened the needle through the stage and just could not make it back. I, I'm not sure if Ike is not able to grab the, uh, the ledge backwards in this game. He wasn't able to do another in older games. But uh, yeah, it just looks like he was too far away from the ledge or can't grab it backwards. Just left that, gave that one up. So here we are into game three. Let's see what happens after the SD. Hopefully he doesn't lose any momentum with that or Evan will be running away with this and making it final. Evan with the dash attack. However, the perfect shield on the down B and then the punish. We see it coming out. It seems like that mechanic, being able to master the perfect shield, is something that's going to be great to see how it evolves throughout the competitive scene. And I feel like he probably got, he was probably able to get a huge punish off that because as perfect shielding uh, works, the stronger the move that you perfect shield, the more time you have to uh, work against it. So if you perfect shield to F-Smash, you're most likely able to throw out your own F-Smash right after that and actually connect. Evan able to avoid some of those short hops and fares and nares coming from Sam, but Sam still applying the pressure. Evan barely getting back on the stage, missing with the down B. Sam unable to find the window to punish, but uh -oh. continues to attack with that back air. Charge B, no good at that point. And already, 
Sam able to get Evan up to close to 100% here. Oh, oh, there it is! <laughs> the up tilt he's been looking for for so long and has finally found it, and now you understand why he's looking for it. It is a very strong move. 3-2 advantage, Evan with the early lead in this one. Evan staying down below, connecting with the up air, so he goes up the grab as well into the side B that connects Evan. Then getting back up with those aerials, and now it's Evan getting Sam a taste of his own medicine. Okay, I feel like he just started the war. Oh, and off the top, yeah, you gotta watch yourself when Gannon is over you. I mean, he does not have the uh, greatest landing options, but if he does connect with them, they are strong, and that down E rocked him right there, just sent him straight off the top. Evan races out to a quick 3-1 stock lead. Sam has a big hill to climb if he wants to come back in this one and get to the finals. Evan doing all that he needs to do at this point to keep Sam at bay. Can Evan recover? Yes, he gets back on the stage. Down B's gonna get punished though. Are we, we gonna see enough? another? Yeah, nope, ain't gonna be enough. We ain't gonna try and tease you with that yeah, one. You saw how far he was. <laughs> he, he knew he'd just go ahead and throw that side B reverse so he'd finish himself off a little faster. But this is uh, this is looking a little difficult right now for Sam. He's Got a whole stock to take down before he even makes it an even game. And then on top of that, it really depends on how much damage he takes on this stock. Just trying to get this second stock off Evan off. But Sam has done this before. Oh, that up tilt almost connecting from Evan. Sam has been down 2-1. He's been able to be on the brink and come back and get the victory. However, oh, no, that won't do it right there. As Gannon and Evan, they move on to the finals. And I really love Gannon's approach in that game. Yeah. Using a lot of the short hop aerials we saw Evan use and really connecting with those powerful moves, including that up tilt when he needed to. Yeah, but you were also talking about his usage of the dash attack, which we actually saw at the end where he dash attacked and then connected it with an up air right after that. That dash attack was definitely real pivotal in his, his offense and his play style. And uh, now, you know, that's what gets you in the finals. Now we get set for our grand finals. This will be a best three out of five. So yes, you get even more Super Smash Brothers Ultimate as we look for our champion in this Arcadian team, team tournament here. Let's take a look at our two finalists. Ryan with an O, who was so good with that Ness and the aggression that he was showing, versus Evan. Evan and that Ganondorf. And now you've got some speed versus power in this matchup. Should be a very interesting battle between these two. And let's start with Ryan. Your Ness, you're able to go in there and you're throwing out Nairs and Fares. You're able to combo with the PK Fires. You still sticking with that approach against Ganondorf and Evan in this matchup, should they choose the same characters. Yeah, that's I feel like that is exactly what's going to happen here. And now that Ganondorf, you know, even though he is a bigger character, uh, he does not have disjointed hitboxes of a sword outside of his smash attack. So most of this is going to be a hand, hands fight, you know. They are going to be straight up fist cup right here, and that is uh, exactly the type of action we're going to see, which might actually benefit Ryan, being that he is a, a smaller and more combo uh, heavy character. So let's we'll see how this one plays out in the first game, or our game here on to Battlefield. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how Ryan's going to play. A faster, speedier character. Will he do everything he uh -oh. can? To get, oh, already throwing out a bevy of fares and the PK Thunder. However, Evan able to recover. And Ryan, just as we talked about, almost an impenetrable wall of attacks that we're seeing from Ness. Yeah. One thing I have to note, though, about Evan's bracket run altogether is that, like, uh, all, uh, every person that he's played against is SD at least once, but after that SD, it seems like he turns it on. So just don't unlock the gates for him, okay? Don't give him any stock. Otherwise, that's when you get the hard mode, Evan, man. Right. Ooh. This seems like a stage, obviously, both fighters very familiar with this layout. And so yeah. you figure you won't see as many stage SDs as Evan. Gonna go ahead and lose his first stock. Ryan races out to a 3-2 lead. And as always, we see that aggression coming from Ryan. How will Evan look to combat that? I mean, I, that is a question that he needs to answer quickly as possible because right now this aggression is uh, is getting the best of him. He finally found himself a couple of uh, good hits there, but honestly, I don't think Gannon has a lot of tools to kind of just run away. You know, he's not he's not a fast character like that. And on top of that, you um, you want to be on top of your opponent as Gannon, so you have two aggressive characters, but one is just being a lot more aggressive than the other. <laughs> Grab into the side throw, and we just see, once again, Ryan not letting up at all. And it seems like Evan's whiffing with a lot of his tacks, and Ryan doing a great job being able to block and counter very quickly. Okay, and there it is, the up smash. Gonna take another stop, Ryan. Man, I, I feel like I should have checked this man. Has he been to tournaments? That's how he's playing, man. I'm, I'm almost afraid to play him right now the way he's playing. He's just so quick with his punishes, and then he's throwing out these fares, these snares, the PK fire, stringing them into combos. He gets you off the ledge, and he's able to ledge guard so effectively. Trying to push Gannon out Ooh. of this. Oh, but how about 
Evan, he ain't done yet. He ain't done it all right there. That was a turnaround. I ain't never seen it. And he needed to find himself a way to get back to stage. And he did it aggressively by throwing out that up, uh, that up air and then stage bounced him off into a KO. A drop of water in an otherwise parched match early on for Evan. He's able to get it. Let's see if he can string together and use some of that momentum to dig back into this one. Ryan, it seems like, has no issues continuing to step on the pedal, apply the pressure, and just juggle around Evan. Let's see if Evan can set anything up. Now, that was a speed bump, and he just ramped over it, man. He does not <laughs> care right now. He's like, I, the speed limits, I have no idea what those are. As he keeps his pressure up, as he keeps the, uh, the pedal to the metal. Oh, oh the PK Fire setting up another combo. And Ryan just using every single move that Ness has in his back. The up throw, not enough at that point. Evan trying to get back on stage. Nicely done with the back air and then another dash attack. Very true. So, okay, there it is. Got the side beat. Looking for him to roll behind him, but instead, uh, Ryan is actually going to throw off the jab and the neutral air is going to go ahead and take that stock and that game. Good first game for Ryan, man. That aggression still paying off, still showing up from uh, the first round that he played here in this, in this top eight into now. And what you're seeing, and we keep referring to it, you're seeing the nares, you're seeing the fares come out as Ness short hops and approaches you, but once he gets into neutral ground with you, you just see the PK fires come out, that sets up some combos, and if you miss on any attack, what we've seen, Ryan doing a great job of punishing you, no matter how quick and how small that window of opportunity is, it seems like he's always there with the right input. Yes, that is exactly correct right there, my man. Uh, is doing a great job of allowing himself to play exactly the way he wants. And that is kind of that's kind of the, the skill of a great player. You know, you want to keep the game uh, on your side. You want to set the pace, you want to do all that. But ooh, the a, switch. A character change, as we like to say. A okay. character <laughs> change. You got to get that first H in there. Ridley coming in. Let's see if Ridley can do anything that nobody's been able to do against Ryan. And that is get the victory here because Ryan has had no issues whatsoever in this matchup, in this tournament. This is some unfamiliarity for uh, everyone on the screen right now. One, I mean, even if you are playing him, this is a very new character, so there's still a lot of tech to be discovered. But two, playing against him, I mean, there's a lot you may not know. So this is going to be a, an interesting switch, and maybe this will work out. Looking for that downbeat, that actually does about like 50 damage right now if you uh, connect with it, so. Well, right now, Evan unable to get the early advantage as Ryan doing a great job. We see, it seems like Ryan's playing a little bit more defensively here, trying to see what Evan can throw out. But those attacks, if Ridley connects with you, like you said, they do so much damage. Yeah, man, right, right there in itself, I think that side beat and doing somewhere uh, over to the upwards of like 20. So that is, that is big damage coming in from Ridley. He is a big, strong character. Uh, you know, some people even say he's too big for the game. Uh, he's obviously <laughs> trying to show you that I, I, I belong here. This is where I'm supposed to be. Though so it looks like Ryan has something different to say about that with that up smash, sending him right out on that first stop. The yo-yo sending Evan for a spin off the top of the screen, and now it's Ryan with a 3-2 stock lead. He's up one game to zero. First one to three games will be your champion of this Arcadian Teen Tournament here in San Diego. I was close right there, just barely makes it through. So, oh, look at that. I think that was, think that was that smash behind him. Was uh, maybe looking for the roll, but was not going to find it. Ryan, he's got that that wall of a, de a defense right here that he's uh, just playing. Nice jabs coming in from Evan. And Evan still unable to take one stock from Ryan yet. So you look at all that power that Ridley has, but Ryan doing a great job of just staying alive and already trying to push forward all the dash attacks and the PK Thunder. That's unable to connect, though. Back throw, just kind of get him off stage, see what he can do as he uh, sets the stage on his side. There's a, a fourth throw right there, put him right back off stage. And this is, I mean, just a good position in general. Nice down tilt, though, scooping him up. And I know it seems like common knowledge and duh, why wouldn't you do this? But it seems like if you're Evan, if you can get Ness off stage, it seems like Ness is very vulnerable in all of his recoveries onto the stage. And now it's two to two in the stocks. Evan finally sort of stabilizing himself and coming back into this one. Yeah. The thing is, like, with the way that uh, Ness recovery is, because he has to kind of stand in place, because he has to hit himself, if you are, you know, risky enough or fast enough, you're actually able to jump out there and hit him before he hits himself with the PK Thunder 2 and uh, push him even farther out. And is that something you look at with Ridley? Because you've got the wings for your recovery. You've got a little bit more recovery for a bigger character. That is true. That is very true. Oh, Ryan actually coming back on stage with the forward air and then immediately gets the back throw as he's trying to uh, go ahead and finish that stock off as quick as possible. Ness back throw always been very prominent uh, as his KO options. Ridley trying to chase down Ryan, and 
as we've seen now, Ridley getting some success as Evan keeping Ryan off the stage and forcing Ryan to recover. It's hard to be aggressive when you're recovering, clearly. Ooh. Oh, oh, no! Just rolls right back into it. That is unfortunate for Evan. I thought he was going to try to go for the side B at first because I've, I've been noticing that Ryan is shielding a lot more because Evan is... There it is. Side B. Don't be listening to me, man. I'm not coaching. I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> Ryan I pulling out the baseball bat and sending a souvenir out to the fans as he takes away Evan's stock. It's now 2-1, but Ryan at 150. This could be evened up very quickly here if Evan can't connect, but Ryan hanging on his nest off the top of the screen. Yeah. Can Evan even this one out? That's crazy, though, to notice that. I just noticed that he is at 170 and did not. And even on a platform, the up throw was not enough. However, that side beat will be enough. Really dragging him across the stage and then, then flinging him out. So here he is, even it up on stocks. Oh, okay, oh, the double oh. up. Oh, oh, tried to get a couple RBIs right there, but no <laughs> luck for Ryan. Really able to get out of that, but already the damage for Evan. And we know what Ryan's capable of doing, especially with some of those aerials. PK Thunder connects. Ryan looking for his opening. Evan able to come back down safely to Earth. Trying to put some pressure on that shield, but the side throw coming in from Evan. PK Thunder, is that going to be enough? Oh, Evan able to get back on the stage. Yes, barely. I feel like that was at the top of his recovery. Gets himself another side beat, throwing him pretty far off. Now he's going for the aggressive edge guard. Forces the air dodge, but does not throw out an up tilt or anything over him to try to punish it. Jeff barely living that too. Oh, no. This input it up me. Unable to get Evan back on the stage, and that's huge because now it's 2-0 Ryan. You were down to the final stock. If you could have gotten that, you would have evened this up. But now you've got to knock off three more stocks from Ryan just to make it 2-1 at this point in our grand final. So if you're Ryan, you're coming downstairs to the kitchen because you can smell a championship cooking. However, Evan wants to hold dinner off just a little bit longer. Yeah, he is right there. <laughs> He's definitely standing at the doorway right now saying, no, Mom didn't say it was ready. It's not time <laughs> yet. But it does not seem to matter if he's going to be kicking his way through the way he is right now. Um, we're trying to see, actually, if we're getting another switch of characters. I see some people in the crowd asking for some characters. What characters are we trying to get him to play? We have the Ganondorf. We have the Ridley. He's hovering over somewhere over Snake. Oh, the oh, Snake? Oh, as I like to say, a character change here. Uh, yeah. He, I mean, he's cycling through, Is man. Snake gonna slither his way into this, and it looks like we might see Snake making his debut in this Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Arcadian Team Tournament. Yeah, man. Snake, you know, coming from Brawl, you know, he's, he did make it to Smash Four, but he snuck his way back into Ultimate with the rest of the cast. And here he is, about to put on the big damage. Starts off real quick with the uh, the F tilt right there, two hit moves, 16 damage right on top of that. And as you said, another bigger, stronger character, but it seems like a lot of his attacks come out much quicker than from what we've seen with Ridley and Ganondorf. What else are we going to see from Snake in this matchup as far as his bag of tricks? Well, Snake, uh, a couple things Snake has. Obviously, you know, he has a lot of uh, explosives to work. Uh, his B moves, all of them seem to be explosive outside of his Cypher. He's got the, he's got the C4, he's got the grenade, he's got the uh, RPG, and then his Cypher is actually a really good recovery, too. So he's got... Uh, a lot of tools as a character is up to still super strong. He does a lot of damage. Uh, I think Snake's only real problem is sometimes because he probably has no hitbox, a lot of people are able to snuff him out of it uh, a lot of the time. And we know how aggressive Ness is going to be controlled by Ryan. If you have a chance where you are vulnerable, he's going to find it with the grab into the side throw from Evan. And Evan finding some success with Snake early on in this one against Ness. If Ryan can get this win, he will be your grand final. Evan trying to make it two to one. And then the, the thing about switching characters too, this is uh, something you know, for the people out there who do plan intense tournaments. Uh, if you have a lot of characters, it's great to know how to use them, but sometimes switching characters will kind of show your hand because it feels like you don't have any confidence in the people that you're playing. Now, the way that he's been switching characters, the game has been close. I wouldn't say that's the case here. He just wants to see. He's throwing, uh, he's throwing the spaghetti basically at the wall to see what sticks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> point time. Need to see if it's cooked or not. Evan, oh, oh, uses the C4 against himself, though. Yeah, twice. That was, okay, the homie stock. Again, and like, he actually pats him on the back. Like, you know, it's okay, man. It's okay. I, maybe you didn't know it was there, but I'll give you the homie stock. This All time. right, the homie stock makes it two stocks each, 0-0. Zero, zero, but you see how quickly an aggressive nest can rack up damage. Evan already at 54, 64% now. All right. There it is, man. 10% off of that jab combo. I mean, Snake, yeah, they're able to do some uh, nice damage. We've got to find a way to get more of that in there. Uh, I feel like Snake can play a very uh, ground-based game, too, because a lot of his, his ground attacks are easily oh, badly back to, back. back to him. Oh, that's the hot corners we like to talk about. Unable to field the grounder. How about Ryan? 
huge turning point in this match, and then the side throw makes it 2-1. Yeah, Make some noise, Ryan! Just one stock away yeah, from becoming your champion of this Arcadia Teen Tournament. Snake and Evan trying to hang on and force another game. A couple of jabs right there, going to clear out the space. And now you've really got to throw, as you like to say, that whole bowl of spaghetti against the wall. Man, now he's got to see what really sits right now. But this is a look at super unfortunate uh, for Evan. I mean, he is down by quite a bit. He's got a lot of damage on his last stock. Ryan charging it up, almost. Oh, not enough right there. Here comes that PK flash. Still not enough. Snake staying alive. Ryan looking for the victory here. Throwing out some PK flashes and PK fires. PK, you name it, it's being thrown out by Ryan. Ryan needs one more stock. <laughs> Evan and Snake hiding in the box at this point. Both fighters just hanging out. Neither one of them wants to give up the sticks at this point. Here comes the grab into the side throw from Snake. Oh, wow. He got so much back right there. What oh, the? With that the does it. Ryan. Getting the victory, that's three games, and Ryan is your champion of the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Arcadian Team Tournament. What a display of character knowledge, too. Did you see how much he got like 40% back off just, uh, he, he absorbed both of those projectiles. Got the C4 and the grenade all in one, and then right after that, I think uh, Evan was, he, or not Evan, yeah, he was, he was forced to go over there and try to do something about it, immediately gets grabbed, back thrown, and it's over. And that is it. And so remember that name, Ryan, fantastically done by Ness. And that's what we talked about. We weren't sure what characters we were going to see in this tournament because this is still just a build of the game that is still in works. But you see what Ness was capable of doing. And I believe Ryan didn't lose a single game the entire tournament, so no issues whatsoever. And this seems like it's a game that really tailors to someone being much more aggressive. Oh, yeah, man. And the thing about that, too, like not only did he... Uh, not losing the game, but he even gave some stocks up to make it even in some of the games that he probably would have won in a, a larger fashion. Uh, but yeah, that aggression that we saw here, man, you know, you, we've been talking about all the options, the way they've kind of like forced, uh, we're well, not really forced, but made aggression a better option. You know, you can't roll as much as you're able to before the way that ledges work and uh, you can get ledge trump and you can't grab the ledge twice without invincibility. So aggression really does help out in this game and you, it was in full on display here uh, with Ryan's vest. So Ryan is your champion as you looked at the bracket, had no issues whatsoever making his way through. 3-0 victory in the finals over Evan. We saw Evan change characters every single game at that point. But now we have some special awards for our top eight. So let's go ahead and head to the stage and pass out some awards, some of that swag, some of that gear for getting here. So let's start with our runner-ups. Basically everyone except our champion, they're going to get some pins, a rally towel, and hats. We have hats for our two through eight finishers. Let's give them a round of applause here in the house right now. We saw that Carlos, Claire, Aljon, Ethan, Milton, Sam, and then Evan, your runner-up. And then we have a medal for our champion, Ryan, with an O. Clap it up for Ryan one more time. But wait, for all of our top eights, we have one more special prize. Everyone loves getting a ticket, but what we have for them, golden tickets. What that means is you're going to get one free copy of the game when it comes out December 7th. So give it up for our top eight. Oh, look at him, man. That dude in the Mario hat. That, that Carlos, he is, he is a lady, man. You got to feel good about that, man. I mean, this is Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory type <laughs> ticket stuff right here, man. You are winning a full copy of the game December 7th. You go to that e-store, you put that download code in, and it will be there waiting for you. And well-deserved, because we started with 64 players that showed up. Mm -hmm. And getting through that free-for-all stage, that's not a walk in the park, because oh, they were playing with items and smash balls. You're basically... Whatever happens, yeah. happens in that one. There's a lot of things that can happen. It can be very risky. However, we get to a top 16. They finally get down to a top eight. Then they took center stage here. And through it all, we saw Ryan with an O climb to the top with the aggressive play of Ness. So nicely done by Ness as well. And I think we're all excited to see just what you can do with all these characters when December 7th comes. Oh, yeah, man. I, that was a great display. And almost every display I've seen so far has been a, a great display of some Smash Ultimate action. You know, we were at E3. We got to saw those uh, professional players play. We went to see, uh, we got a, a lot of people who were there for the tournament to play. And now here we are at San Diego Comic-Con getting some of the newer talent out here to play in this Teen Arcadian. And uh, what talent did we see today, man? That is 
it, that was, I feel like I was actually watching a real turn. Well, a big thank you to the fans that came here and showed their support, and a big thank you to our hardworking crew from behind the scenes that put this on. Just a first class presentation for myself and TK Breezy. December 7th, can't get here soon enough. Until then, we'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.